Oh, it's me again. Today I'm going to show you the very easiest way of putting color on this thing. The first thing I'm going to do, because this is bugging me, is I'm going to go to edit mode. Press alt. Select. Oops. First get a face. <laughs> Press alt select. And here I'm going to go to face shade smooth. There, now I'm happier. Ta-da! Object. Oh, it's a little better. Now, when I first bought this thing, it was probably painted the ugliest color it could have been painted. So let's not paint it that color. Go to this tab, which is uh, your material properties. I already pressed it. Press new. And let's call this paint. paint. This immediately gives you a whole lot of options. This use nodes you don't have to worry about. But leave it on. It's on by default. Leave it on because it gives you a lot more options than you would otherwise have. The base color, I am going to pick not the color it was, which was awful. I'm going to make it sort of a mid blue. Now you say, but fine. It's not showing up. There's a reason for that. Right now, if you go up to this corner under Options, Viewport Shading is set to Display in Solid Mode. This is when you want to tweak things, but you don't want to be distracted by what color it is. Go over to the next one, Viewport Shading, Display in Material Preview. Click on that. Et voila. There we are. Now, one thing I'm going to do here, shift, middle mouse button down. For some reason, you know, Blender has this sunlight. And they put it in the wrong, they, it, it ends up behind stuff. So I always pull it to the front and a little down. The reason for this is that while this gives you a good view of the colors that you're using, it doesn't give you the shadows. Go back up to Viewport Display and click on Display in Render Preview. Now, if you don't know what a render means, a render is when Blender takes the entire scene you've built up and everything in it and the lights and sound and fury and all that stuff and makes either a really good picture or a movie out of it. We're not going to get to that yet, but anyway, here we are with our shadows. And you can, this is rough, this isn't exactly how it's going to look, but you can move the light around and see where the shadows are and see if you like the way it's coming out. You can move it up and down and all around, it's pretty cool. Okay, so I like that. Um, let's go back to color. So click on that again to make sure you've got it selected. And let me show you the cool options you've got. Base color is whatever color the base is. And you notice when you click that, you can get RGB or U saturation value, or you could type in a hex number if you know it. RGB is probably what most people are familiar with, although I've found generally that RGB is good for some things and U saturation value is good for some things. It does, you know, whatever floats your boat. Subsurface, we're not gonna, gonna worry about. That's for things that are slightly transparent. Metallic, this is one of my favorites. Metallic, 
turns this into metal. There's a little bit of metal. There's a little more. Now, if this color were all metal, that's what it would look like. But you can't see anything, so you go back up to the base color. Slide this up a little, and you make it lighter. And go back here and get this light. Move the light around. And oh boy, it gets fun, right? But we're not going to use that either. Um, so let's bring that metallic back down and maybe make it a little darker color again. Specular means it's a way it's a way of determining how shiny it is. The more specular something is, you see this little wash of light here, the brighter and more concentrated that will be. So this is 50%. This is no specularity at all, which means it's completely rough and bleh. And when you pull it completely up, yeah, it's a little better. Specular tint is... I've never really noticed it to actually do anything. What it's supposed to do is make this highlight a little more strongly the background color, but I've never noticed that it does. Um, roughness is another way of getting the shininess. If you've got no roughness at all, you can see you're really, really, really specular. Or you can turn the roughness all the way up and it doesn't matter what specularity you have. It's too rough for anything to show up. So just put it somewhere you think is, uh, that's okay. Anisotropic doesn't, no, nah, it's that you don't have to worry about. Sheen, uh, again, on something like this, it's not going to show up much. On animals, it does. Clear coat is, say, you had this thing and you thought, this is so gorgeous the way it is, I'm going to varnish it to make sure no, nothing changes it. So you put a clear coat on, and it does that. It just gives it a shinier top layer, which again, you know, you don't see much. But hey. Well, let's not have that. Index of refraction, we're not going to use. Transmission means does light go through it. Now, this is not normally something you're going to want, but light there it is with light going through it transmission roughness is what you use to get your frosted glass alpha here is a measure of opacity alpha of one and almost all of these things are just well actually all of them are almost all of them are zero to one it is fully opaque you turn it down and it's fully transparent and if you turn the transmission up. Okay, nothing happens. Oh well, that's no good. Emission means does it glow in the dark? When it's black, that means it doesn't glow in the dark. So let's pick some glow in the darky color. Now it's glowing in the dark. How much it glows in the dark is controlled by this. Yeah, it just glows a little, doesn't glow any, but you can see you've got a whole range of options if you like paint. In the next video I'm going to show you how to use textures, image textures, to make, make it look like it's actually made of wood, which is what this is actually the color it was painted when I got it. Isn't it horrible? But I stripped all of this off, and what was underneath, I will show you next time. Take it easy. Bye-bye.